think it's important in this case to first point out that Evolution Studios has been making racing games and nothing but racing games since 2001 with the release of World Rally Championship for the PS2. This studio has been making racing games for over 14 years and yet somehow still managed to release a product like Drive Club, the worst racer of its type that I've ever had the displeasure of playing. I'm not going to mince words here, folks. Drive Club isn't just bad. It's horrible, repugnant, deplorable, reprehensible, insulting, a cancerous, festering boil on the ass cheek of the PS4's exclusive list. Gano Herpa aids on a disc. Its only redeeming features are its visuals and the ability to pull it out of your PS4. That's it. I mean, damn. Where do I even start? Drive Club was touted as THE online racing game. All the hype stressed two things. The graphics and the online social functionality. Well, I'll give them the graphics because short of the fact that it's 30 frames per second, Drive Club is without a doubt the best looking racer to ever come out on a console. The cars are immaculate, the tracks are beautiful, the lighting effects are very well done, the weather effects border on mind-blowing, the cockpit view is pure eye candy, there's really nothing bad I can say about how the game looks. But about that online functionality. I don't even have to bring up the fact that the online multiplayer was essentially non-functional for the game's first two months of release. It now works more or less as advertised, aside from the fact that the community is already dying a slow, tuberculosis-ridden death. It's just that what's advertised really isn't that much to write home about. Don't get me wrong, the actual online racing aspect of it is more or less passable. In fact, it's a more enjoyable experience than the single player by far. But when I get into the single player, you'll find out why that's not really anything to brag about. First off, you have your clubs. The main gist of the game is that you can make or join a club of up to a whopping six whole players and compete against other clubs. Your club goes up in level as each individual racer earns fame points by winning races, beating challenges, that kind of shit. Fine. Great. Super. The problem there is that until you've unlocked or purchased the right cars for some of these races, you'll get a notification stating that you don't own an appropriate car for that race, so the game will loan you one. No problem, right? Except for the fact that you don't earn fame points for your club by winning races with loaned cars. If you haven't bought or unlocked the right type of car, it doesn't matter if you beat every challenge on the track and come in first, you ain't getting shit for fame. No car, no fame. The problem here is that unlocking cars is also tied to the single player, where several cars are locked until you join a club and get that club to a certain level. So there are several instances during your progression where you are more or less stuck both in single player and multiplayer because each has restrictions that's holding back the other. And let me tell you something about that single player. This is the worst single player of any racing game I've played over the past 15 years. It is mind-bogglingly bad. The game in every way is set up to visibly resemble sim racers like Forza 5 and Gran Turismo, but the actual gameplay feels like a mishmash of Project Gotham racing mixed with the ultra-griefing of the AI in Mario Kart. You have a point system that's essentially a rip-off of the style system from the Project Gotham Racing series. This point system determines your level, which is one of the factors of unlocking cars and events. But it also has a star system. These stars are awarded for achieving various goals during a given event. Place first or in the top three, get a star. Beat the cornering challenge, get a star. Finish the race without going off the track or hitting another car, you get a star. Accumulate enough of these stars, and more events are unlocked, which gives you the chance to unlock more cars. You get the idea. Essentially, it's the star system from Mario. That in itself isn't such a big deal. The issue is that the gameplay is constantly at odds with you, seemingly working intentionally against you to prevent you from earning enough points and stars to unlock cars and tracks. One third of this comes from the controls, and the other two thirds from the AI. 
The steering itself is fine. Very precise, very functional. It's when it comes to the cornering that the game totally fails. It's trying to simultaneously be realistic like a sim, but have an arcade racer vibe by having a drift button like Burnout Paradise and other games like that. These two concepts just simply don't go well together. Add in the fact that different cars have different drift abilities, and what you end up with is totally unpredictable drifting and cornering from race to race, and even from turn to turn. The gameplay seems to focus most of its actual playability on the drafting rather than the drifting. You can tell by watching the other AI cars, as the only time they ever break perfect in sync formation is if you try to move up, especially if you're past level 8. Once you get to level 8, every AI driver turns into dirt dastardly and muttly from wacky races. They will constantly and unrelentingly hound you, slam into you, clip you, whatever they have to do to knock you off the road. It's like playing a game of Mario Kart where every racer but you has infinite invisible blue shells. Then there's the rubber banding. You can make it past a lot of them, see on the map that the next car behind you is several car lengths behind, get within two to three seconds of crossing that finish line, and one of them will magically, pow, rubber band right past you and knock you into second place. You can be on a straightaway running full speed and a car that you know has a weaker top speed and a weaker acceleration than your car because you own it as well and have compared the stats will blast past you and continue to accelerate to the point where you have to look on the mini map to even see where they are. They will also gang up on you, sacrificing their own place to block the lanes two cars across to keep you from passing without going off road and losing points. And it's not just about keeping you from placing in the top three either. The AI doesn't want you completing challenges. I can't even count how many times I've been doing a drifting or cornering challenge and an AI car will pull up to my right or left and intentionally bash into me and knock me off the line, stopping my score short of beating the challenge, then taking off and leaving me spinning in the dirt. It really is that bad. And let's talk about that point system. Yes, it's a mechanic ripped from Gotham but it's also cheap as fuck. Drive Club knocks off points for damn near everything. If you go off road, bye bye points. If you hit another car, bye bye points. If another car hits you, bye bye points. If you take a corner in the way the game doesn't appreciate, bye bye points. If you've got the wrong set of fuzzy dice hanging on your rear view mirror, bye bye fucking points. The only way to possibly avoid losing points is to play just like another AI car and follow in line only trying to pass on straightaways using the draft boost. But again, the minute you break formation, here comes the hitmen on four wheels to knock your dick in the dirt. And of course, every time they do this to you, you lose points for hitting another vehicle, and you lose points for going off-road, and you lose points for a cornering violation if they happen to ram you going into a corner, which of course slows your progression, making the whole campaign seem much longer than it really is. Hell, the only reason I made it as far in the game as I did is by ignoring the point system and just ramming my way to victory. But of course, you can only get so far doing that before you get stuck at a point where you haven't earned enough to go any further, and then you hit that grind line, doing races over and over again with different cars, hoping to luck out and earn another star and a few more points. Because sure, they want it to look like a sim racer, but forget about just souping up the cars you already have. There is no car upgrading system. No new engines. No new tires. Nada. What you see is what you get. You can slightly customize your car with various unlockable decals and paint styles, but that's it. The cars do show damage when collisions occur, but the wrecks are rarely realistic. I've only been flipped once and that's because a Volkswagen Beetle rammed me into the side of a cliff face so hard my car went fully sideways onto the wall and then flipped, causing the car to jackknife in midair and roll several times down the street. When you get run off the road, you can press the left side of the touchpad to put yourself back in the race most of the time. Other times you'll be facing the wrong direction, but your car will still be rolling slowly in the right direction, just backwards, so the prompt to hit the reset never pops up, and pressing it without the prompt on the screen does two things, jack and shit. At other times, you're pressing the left side of the touchpad, and the game misinterprets it as the right side, 
throwing you into photo mode when you didn't even want to fucking be there. So you have to slowly back up out of the menu and just that quickly you're in last place. That's right friends, even the controls go out of their way to fuck you. Oh, and just to add insult to injury, not only does going off road cost you points, but the second you go off the asphalt, regardless of the terrain, your car is suddenly driving through molasses. And if you don't get back on the road within three seconds, it automatically resets you, which puts you even further behind because now you're having to reaccelerate. All of this is somewhat less noticeable when you play the multiplayer, simply because when you're playing online against real people, they don't want to lose points any more than you do. So aside from a griefer here or there, everyone tries their best to win the race cleanly. Add to that the fact that they're all having to fight the same broken control scheme that you are, and you end up with an accidentally more pleasurable experience. But then again, you won't get anywhere playing only the multiplayer, because your progress is annoyingly tied directly to the single player, which again is broken as fuck. And when you see how many cars and tracks your 60 bucks actually gets you, a few hours in you'll begin to wonder why you're even bothering at all. Drive Club's Retail Edition comes with an embarrassingly small amount of content. You get a couple of unlocked cars and one campaign. The campaign is lengthy, yes, but a lot of it repeats over the same small number of tracks, just with different car classes, daytime states, or completion goals. Oh, and did I mention that the much-touted weather effects that were patched in have only ever shown up in the multiplayer side in the 20-plus hours I put into it? Apparently, they don't show up in the single-player at all, and that's on purpose. Yeah. I mean, just look at this car list. There's as many cars that you have to purchase as there are to unlock. Then you look at the campaign page. One campaign and then a whole screen of purchasable add-on campaigns. Gee, it's almost like they want you to buy cars with superior stats instead of unlocking cars that only give you marginal increases in performance at best and boost your stats by buying other campaigns to give you enough points and then stars to continue with the main campaign. Hmm. This game has only been out since October and already the community is small and it seems to dwindle a little more each day. My PSN friends list is full of players still at level 1, with less than an hour put into it. They were clearly smarter than I. Aside from temporary spikes from new campaign packs, I'm guessing this game will mostly be a ghost town before it hits a year in. Meanwhile, I can load up Forza 5 and never have an issue finding a race. Not so much with Forza Horizons 2, because it didn't sell worth a crystal shit, but it trumps Drive Club in every aspect except graphics. Even the clubs are far, far bigger in Forza Horizons 2. If you're an Xbox One gamer and you haven't bought Forza Horizons 2 yet, I strongly recommend it. It's the best racing game of this generation thus far, and it beats the ever-loving fuck out of Drive Club hands down, and that's coming from a guy whose preference is and has been PlayStation since 2002. To sum up, Drive Club is an abysmal, borderline unplayable cash grab waste of money. It's 60 bucks worth of beta shareware, the undisputed heavyweight champion of shitty AAA racers. It's a glorified delayed launch day tech demo that gives you very little bang for your buck, and the developers know it too. I suspect that's why the much-touted free PSN Plus edition never happened, because stripping the game down any further from the barely there pittance that the retail version already gives you would end up being little more than a very pretty outrun. Drive Club gets a 2 out of seven.